Portland Fire and Rescue presents Safe and Sound, Preventing Urban Wildfire. Lush and natural vegetation is part of Portland's charm. It's one of the things that makes our city beautiful and livable. However, our wildland environment creates significant fire hazard, threatening lives and property. The density and type of plant life provides an abundance of fuel to burn, and our steep topography encourages fires to spread quickly. Wildfires occur in many parts of Oregon, especially during the late summer. However, wildfires in an urban setting like Portland can be much more deadly. Because of our dense population and the number of structures in wildland settings, we have less time to evacuate residents and protect personal property. In the area around Forest Park alone, almost 8,000 structures exist representing $1.9 billion of property value, not to mention the 20,000 people who inhabit them. The potential for loss of life and property is very real, as our neighbors to the south know only too well. In California, the 1991 Oakland Hills fire taught the fire service some valuable lessons about the nature of urban wildfires, but not without significant loss. 26 people died and approximately 3,000 homes were lost. Here in Portland, another unique factor adds a specialized risk to our urban wildland areas, and it's our love for keeping Portland green. We've designated environmental zones, rules designed to ensure that plants and trees are left alone to grow and flourish. Those environmental zones typically coincide exactly with the areas that are at high risk for urban wildfire. In a nutshell, these are our hot spots, and if you're watching this video, you probably live in one of them. Unfortunately, we have quite a recorded history of fires in these areas. For example, in the early evening of August 8, 2001, residents living on the Willamette Boulevard Bluff near the University of Portland very nearly lost their homes and a large part of their community. Firefighters and citizens in a dramatic team effort stopped the five alarm wildland fire just before it overwhelmed the structures in its path. That example, although recent and dramatic, is just one in a historical pattern of urban wildfires in Portland. On Sunday, August 19th, 1951, a quick-moving urban wildfire started in Forest Park near Lee Ferguson Road. The fire raced up and over Viewpoint Ridge. Flames 50 feet high were recorded as the fire consumed over 1,000 acres in the span of one evening. Just because we haven't had a catastrophic urban wildfire in more than 50 years does not mean the threat is small. Actually, that very fact increases the danger dramatically because it means there's significant buildup of plant material. In other words, plenty of fuel to burn. We need to strike a balance between nature and fire safety, not only to protect lives, but habitats and air quality. Monday, August 20th, 1951. Portland City Council threw its full resources into the firefighting effort. They sent about 500 people from Portland Fire and Rescue, the Public Works Department, Water Bureau, and the Park Bureau to battle the blaze. You can reduce the danger by limiting the hazards in the ignition zone. Because of the environmental zone restrictions on removing plants and trees, you can only perform limited vegetation modification. Here's Senior Inspector Richard Haney with tips on what you can do to prevent the spread of fire. There's a lot of smart things you can do to make your landscape and home safe from wildfires. One of them is pruning back the branches that are within 10 feet of the walls and roof structures. Trim coniferous trees within 30 feet of structures so that none of the limbs are closer than 6 feet from the ground. Water plants and landscape near your home to keep the moisture level high. Irrigation is a great idea. If you don't water your lawn in summer, let it go dormant and cut it as low as possible. Rake ground covers, such as bark dust, away from decks and siding. Remove nuisance plants like non-native hawthorn, holly, and blackberry. You'll find a full list of nuisance plants at portlandonline.com. Keep landscape plants free of dead wood and litter. Dispose of trimmings away from homes and structures. Recycle them. Don't put them back into the natural area. That just adds to the fuel load. Maintain your driveway to allow access by emergency vehicles. This may require a permit. Portland Online also has information on that. And finally, when gassing up yard equipment, make sure that you're on the driveway motors off and the engines cool. When planning a new landscape, select native plants that are naturally fire resistant. Find a list of species on the city's website. When planning landscape, think long term. 
trees this size are going to grow into trees this size. Make sure we have at least 10 feet of spacing between the crowns. This will help keep fire from jumping from one plant group to another. In your home, use non-combustible siding and roofing materials. Consider having a fire sprinkler system installed in your home. Keep your roof and gutters free of pine needles and leaves. Store firewood or anything else that can burn away from buildings. Keep the foundation and attic vents screened. Be careful when cooking outside. And of course, don't use illegal fireworks. Keep in mind, the safety of your space is only as good as others in your community. So take a neighbor helping neighbor approach. Help elderly folks and those with disabilities to keep their homes safe. It's the right thing to do, plus your home will stay safer if everyone in the community helps to keep fire out. On the evening of August 20th, 1951, firefighters started making a fire lane near Thompson Road on Skyline to carry equipment and personnel to the scene of the fire. They called it the Burma Road. And finally, if the worst happens, you need to be prepared for that too. Work with your community to develop a neighborhood emergency plan that includes a notification and alert system, identification of neighbors with special needs, and carpools to eliminate traffic jams. Prepare a small grab-and-go kit of essentials that you might need, such as cash, personal items, medications, plus items you may need for the care and transportation of your pets. Practice at least two escape routes from your home. Remember that evacuation by foot can be extremely hazardous and is a last resort. Identify areas where you can go that are safe from wildfire, such as schoolyards or other open areas. If you have street trees that front the public right-of-way, keep them pruned enough to allow passage of emergency vehicles. You can get a no-cost permit from Urban Forestry, which includes a free tree inspection. Check out the city's website for more information. If an urban wildfire starts, Implement your family evacuation plan and your neighborhood emergency plan. Keep roads as clear as possible for emergency vehicle access. If you have enough time, close all the windows and doors. Remove lightweight curtains and drapes from your windows. They could catch fire from radiant heat, even if your windows are closed. Shut off natural gas at the home meter. And remember to let the gas company turn it back on for you. Tuesday, August 21st, 1951. The weather was hot and dry and the blaze was going full force. Firefighters had brought the Burma Road within 200 yards of the fire. They laid 6,000 feet of fire hose through the heart of the burning area. For the rest of the summer of 1951, crews of 200 people per day worked to cut down burning trees, put out hot spots, and build trails for equipment and people. When all was said and done, this fire burned 2,400 acres. From the heart of Forest Park, it burned to the southwest until it broke over the ridge tops, sweeping to the northwest, to an area now known as Forest Heights. The bottom line is, urban wildfires are a community concern. From entire neighborhoods at risk to preserving our natural habitats, forests, and parks, everyone can take part in prevention as well as mitigation and evacuation. If you want more information on what you can do, check out our website. You can download brochures about native vegetation, how to reduce fuel loads, fire resistant construction materials, and many other ways to help reduce the risk of fire. Remember, it's not just about saving lives, it's about saving your life.